This is a follow-up video on the um, repairing cassette player one after I've had a couple of comments on that video regarding the size of the, the tape spools or reels um, between the beginning of the tape or end when the spool's basically empty and when it's all the tapes on one side because it's getting towards the end of the tape or it'd be vice versa when it's um, at the beginning of the tape but we're only concerned with the take-up reel because that's the only one driven so people were asking about there must be a speed change in the take-up reel um, as as the diameter basically increases and it's it's actually going to wrap a lot more tape going to have a much larger circumference on one side than the other or even regarding the, the, the fixed speed of the capstan and the pin troller which is pulling this the tape through so that's fixed at um, I think it's about 4.8 seven eight centimeters a second or 47.8 uh, millimeters per second of tape is going through now the supply reel that's just free running like it is here i can just spin it there's no unless you're in rewind there's this is never driven so it's just a the spool just spins or the reel and then the spool in the tape or well, maybe it's a reel i don't know you have film spools and tape reels but either way we'll call it a spool to differentiate it from the actual reel in the cassette itself um, so basically that's free um, so that can just whatever speed the the capstan pulls out this will just uh, freewheel and if we're at the, the other end of the tape then this will basically because it's longer uh, it'll run slower it'll actually slow down compared to the the smaller reel if we pull off our um, one second of tape 47 millimeters or so um, that's there's actually a little bit more because this is about 22 millimeter diameter the circumference going by pi is um, 3.14 etc times that so about three times so it's getting up around the 70 millimeter or seven centimeters of actual tape around uh, the empty spool so it's going to take takes I actually measured this I'll put a couple of black marks on this and and it works out exactly with the 4.78 uh, well, so let's say 4.8 centimeters a second seven is nearly three times 2.4 centimeters whereas 4.8 is two of them so this is actually like a half 50 percent longer than how much tape goes through per second so this actually takes one and a half seconds to do a full rotation because of the larger diameter um, it's not just set to if they made this spool a bit smaller they could have had exactly one one seconds worth of tape wrapped around it but because it's a bit larger diameter it's actually one and a half seconds um, but either way, obviously when the tape's around the other way, we're going to have one and a half seconds and another one and a half seconds and basically I think it ends up being about two and a half times what goes through in one second. So this is obviously not going to turn around in one and a half seconds. It has to slow down quite significantly to less than half of that um, to supply the same amount of tape. And it's the same, and again, like I said, with the, with the supply side, it doesn't matter because this just, just adjusts the speed. It just can rotate or whatever speed it likes because it's not driven by anything. But when we get to our take-up reel here, this is actually driven in this particular mechanism. The motor runs the, the capstan. Uh, we've also got the reel, the, the reel drive for fast forward and rewind, the little idler there. But that's not related to the the playback reel drive that, there's actually another little tiny gear on the front of this capstan that comes up to this larger gear here I think there's yeah, another gear on the back actually first which drives this this gear here which has the auto stop mechanism on this particular mech and when we're going to play that swings across so we've got direct drive from the capstan through this bottom gear to this top gear and then onto the spool so basically whatever this is basically going to be a fixed speed because I mean, I'm not sure what the RPMs of this are, but it amounts to pulling that 4.78 seconds of tape through, uh, 4.78 centimeters of tape per second through, uh, all the way through the tape. So that's just always a constant speed. But this reel has to, it has to reel in that much tape per second, or as I found out, it actually goes a little bit faster than that, so there's no slack in the tape. But it always has to pull in that amount of tape. But again, when the real size changes, um, it's going to be like two thirds of a rotation of the, the empty reel. Um, we'll get get a full second of tape around it, and it'll be a full one and a half seconds of tape by the time it's done a, a complete rotation. Uh, but when we have the the end of the tape here, 
it's actually going to have more like two and a half times that length per rotation rather than um, one and a half per rotation so it's got to slow down quite a bit otherwise it's going to be trying to stretch the tape or pull it through too fast if that did a full rotation one and a half seconds but it's got a much bigger diameter here it's actually going to want to wrap twice as much tape around but the speed controlled by the pin troller is not going to allow that it's not going to slip or anything it'll probably just try and if it was completely direct drive it would actually try and stretch the tape or break the tape even um, I don't think it could actually pull it through faster through the capstan because everything's run off the same motor I'm not sure it'd be able to speed it up but in theory it'd be pulling very hard um, which we don't want so it definitely has to slow down this this take up reel um, so if I put this in play mode and I spin the capstan you can see our take up reels running we've got a little that's our little intermediate gear for the fast forward so that's just against against the um, take up reel but that's not, not engaged with anything, that's just free running at the moment. We're actually coming up through this capstan shaft, or through the gear off the bottom of the capstan shaft, through this upper gear, and into our supply reel. And if I try and stop that gear there, oh, it's this gear here. If I try and stop this outer gear here, I can't do it. And try and turn the capstan, it's turning against me because this, this gear here is direct drive. So capstan, um, tooth plastic gear on there through these other pair of gears into this one and yeah you can't can't stop it there's no slippage nothing there so if that was going directly into the tape once the diameter gets up it would actually try and break the tape so what actually we have here is there's actually a little clutch here so there's actually two gears stacked on top of each other here and hopefully you can see there's a little white when I pull that upper gear out there's some white felt under there this has actually got a spring between this sprocket bit and the, the gear, the upper gear, which pushes it against this, there's a felt pad and a lower gear. So if we actually put it back in play, if I'm turning the capstan, even though I can't stop this top gear, if I hold the actual sprocket part that goes up into the tape, you actually get slippage there. That, that isn't turning now, I can hold that still. The other upper gear is still running happily and our little fast forward one stopped as well so that lower there's actually two gears stacked on top of each other with a clutch the lower one, lower one will actually slip and I actually initially thought that was just for when it gets to the end of the tape when it's flying through the tape well it's not flying through it in play more fast forward and rewind but as we go through this tape and we get we're on the leader at the moment eventually we'll get to the end and basically it'll just jam at the end of the tape so you need a little bit of slippage before the auto stop kicks in is that gonna go yeah, yeah there you go so that tape stopped a little bit before Actually, if I rewind it a bit and press play you'll see the tape and what's happened there we've missed our gear our tape up but it's, the tape stopped completely, then the auto stop kicks in, so I assume the clutch was just for that. Oh, what happened when I rewound? Oh, am I spinning it, oh, spinning it the wrong way? That's what I was doing. <laughs> yeah, I was going going the wrong direction. That's why it wrapped around the wrong way. But anyway, so that that's what I thought. I assume the slippage was for there. And there's another clutch. If we put it in rewind, say, again, we've kind of, we've got this belt coming off our capstan into this assembly here which goes up through a shaft into a gear onto our rewind or supply spool at the moment but if I hold that again before the auto stop kicks in it'll actually stop because there's a, a clutch here this one's not on the front it's on the back here I can press this little outer piece down and again there's another I don't know if you can start seeing that whiteness there just make it out yeah there's again another one part in this case they're kind of plates rather than gears but they're sprung there's a spring pushing them together and a felt pad in there so that's I'll probably have to I'll put it in tape the other way around I'm going to fast forward briefly just put a bit of tape on there going to rewind now spinning it the wrong way again and you'll see that the reels have stopped now and I'm still winding and then then the auto stop kicks in so that clutch if I go back and fast forward we may actually be able to see that clutch 
probably a bit hard to see in this light, but am I going the right way? No, I'm not. And that, yeah, the centre part of that clutch is now stopped. And we're not getting any auto stop. Oh, there it goes. I think it takes a full rotation or something, which of, uh, yeah, it'd be a full rotation of that. Yeah, well, that gear there, I guess. And the fact that that one stopped. So it's quite a few turns of the actual capstan because it's so much thinner before we actually get that gear to, to operate the auto stop. But you see that that slips, so that's got the slippage. The, the clutch on the back here is purely for the fast forward rewind through the little idler here. But when we're in play mode, uh, we've got a completely different clutch here and it's not just for when it reaches the end of the tape before the auto stop operates, it's actually to, to slow this tape down. And I can sh actually demonstrate that if we go back to the other side. Well, I've actually marked these things on here. Uh, I can get those back to... Yeah, that's about where the marks, I should have really marked it when it was in a particular spot, but we've got these two black marks I've put on here. They're roughly facing about two o'clock on the old analog clock sort of scale, or face. And if I go into play, we can actually see the speed differential here. This is this would be at the end of the tape, so we've got almost all the tape on our take-up reel. We're down to the leader tape on our supply reel, so we're about to hit the end. And we've hit auto stop. So I'll go back into play. And we can actually see. I'll just have to roll them back up again. Okay, so they're lined up to about two o'clock ish position there and there. We're in play. And you can see this one's already. You know, so that's about what? From two o'clock, that's back over, that's done a half rotation. This one's. Probably only done like a quarter if that. And as I keep winding around, these supply reels, well it's just kicked forward a little bit there, but that's that's done me touching it, I think. It's done one rotation already. But this one's only just down to the I guess maybe a third or a bit more, getting towards the halfway mark. And that's that's hit a roughly the half a rotation, and this one's already on its next rotation. And that's just done its second rotation. And this one still hasn't got to its first. So as soon as it comes back up to two o'clock, we've yeah, nearly nearly got round to half. So two and a half turns on that one to one rotation on this one. And that's basically the speed difference. The pinch roll is what's controlling the speed at the moment. I'm winding the capstan as if the motor was. And all everything's been driven there, except well, the actual take-up reel is also being driven. But um, we can actually have a look and see the the clutch is actually slipping. Um, yeah, the diameter of this this uh, spool inside the tape is very similar to the diameter of that, so they've probably made it that way. But it actually seems that this take up even it, there's actually a bit of clutch slipping after I looked even even at the very beginning of the tape. So we're right on the the leader tape here. Here's the old big biro, so we've hit the end there. So that's why. When you're rewinding or something, obviously the tape suddenly bangs to an end, so we need a clutch to slip when that happens, because that's just tight now. If I really turn that, I'm going to break the tape. They'll probably take quite a lot of force. They're pretty strong, these things. So that's why we need a clutch slippage in fast forward and rewind, and also in play, because if we're playing the tape and we get to the end, again, the, the tape goes tight, the reels, or the spool has hit its end, because the tape's run out. So you need a clutch for that, but yeah, we also need a clutch for for when we're in play mode. Now I might have to do another close-up of this a bit better, but there's two gears down in here we're looking at, one on top of the other, a forward and back one. You can just make out the the reel coming or the sprocket coming up into the tape here, which obviously comes out the front here. So hopefully. I might have to get a better zoom lens and do a close-up to really show this. But as I'm turning this now, the actual front or upper gear towards the cassette 
should be going ever so slightly faster than the that's the one that's directly driven the one below it is the actual one that slips on the clutch and I'll just have a look at it myself tilt it this way so I can see what's going on but it's here just ever so slightly the teeth on the back one are just ever so slightly falling behind it as it rotates this way you can see the other one's just slipping instead of staying with each tooth they're sliding backwards relative to the, the front gear if we flip the tape over where the actual slippage is going to be the strongest because this has had to slow right down because it's got so much tape on it now and larger circumference then we should find that's probably going around half the speed uh, be hard to really mark these but you could actually go right through put a white marking on or something and eventually you'd see that front gear would be so much faster that the marking would actually lap past the other gear but um, that's definitely a lot of slippage there so that clutch is slipping away so I think what they've done is even when this we're right at the beginning of the tape I think they've made it so that purposely designed these so that this this reel runs a little bit faster than the amount of tape coming out of the pinch roller and capstan just so there's no chance of a, a bit of slackness there because then I guess with time you'd probably even get the slack part building up if it was coming in faster than it was taking it up though eventually I guess once the diameter of this increases enough it would sort of even out but until then so we you'd have a bit of slack so we really want that just slightly faster and just a little bit of slippage so it's a, basically the tension on the tape between the the pinch roller capstan here pinch roller is pressing against the capstan and that's controlling the speed of the tape it's got a nice tight grip on it there and between there it comes basically out of those around this little spool inside the actual or little pulley or whatever you want to call it that just free runs inside the tape case and there's another little post there I think just to keep the tape in the right position and then up onto the actual take up spool as we call it um, that, that amount of tension there'd be a slight bit of tension on that if this is going slightly faster the sprockets pulling and the reel take up reel is going a bit faster that tension on that tape there will be enough to cause that, that clutch to slip in there and that's what basically happens as the, the tape gets larger and larger on this side uh, the diameter and the circumference goes up we actually find that clutch slips more and more and that's what allows the speed difference I say the other side here either way the tape's around that doesn't care it just free wheels so it'll just adjust its speed automatically because it's the the capstan here pulling it off there and there's nothing holding it back only the slightest bit of friction I guess from this reel which if that's working well shouldn't really have much at all and that's about it basically so so that's how that works so it is, it is a, a slippage clutch there just to put that back in play just to allow for the speed difference this is running slightly faster and if I even do that by hand I should be able to just yeah, get this the back gear see I can actually turn the other gear here backwards or the other ones going forward as I won the capstan so that's the sort of amount of slippage you get now the reason I didn't, wasn't really aware of this is that I don't think I've ever had a problem with one of these clutches um, I mean you would get cases where people would spray lubricant like WD-40 or something like that all over these mechs trying to get them going because it was usually just a slipping belt or something so they only made it worse and that could could certainly ruin these felt uh, clutches the little pads in them and make them slip too much but even then even this if this has is worn and has quite a bit of slippage um, because the cap the pinch roller and capstan is doing all the work of bringing the tape in this would really have to have virtually no torque at all to not still manage to wind the tape on because there's not an awful you know once it once the, the capstan and pinch roll will push it in there it'll actually lose all tension become slack and then this even if it's only ever so slightly turning will be enough to pull that slack in and you know it might be a little slow at it and you might get a bit of a build up a tape in there but the chances are it's not, not going to get to the point of chewing even if it's very weak um, the only other possible thing that could go wrong with one of these maybe on an older deck that's been sitting around forever is the two two halves could actually stick together or something and the clutch doesn't slip at all in which case you would get problems where It'd be trying to, it'd, I guess it'd be stretching the tape or trying to break the tape. Uh, maybe that would make the machine slow down or something, but again, I haven't ever seen it. But because of the age of these things now, and some of them are being 
lying around for a long period it is possible that someone may come across one of these that actually has seized and doesn't slip at all um, obviously if you turn the put it in play mode and turn the, the capstan by hand even just a little bit of force on this sprocket it takes a reasonable amount you don't want this to be really weak and easy to stop but this sort of bites into my finger the little ridges on the sprocket I have to press reasonably hard on them and I can actually stop the the sprocket from turning but you'll see this this gear here is still happily turning around so we know that the the capstan driver is there but that, that does put a reasonable amount of force which is what, what you want to feel but it should eventually actually slip and you know that the clutch is working then so it should have a reasonable amount of torque not too little you shouldn't be able to just very lightly touch this and it stops uh, but at the same time if you do put a bit of force on it it should start slipping meaning that your clutch is working fine but you're much more likely to get problems with something like belt slipping or something before that happens um, you know, I think I have had the, certainly the rewind fast forward clutch can be a problem because once this tapes you know, starting out with a great big spool on this end to pull back and the these tapes usually have like a bit of plastic um, sort of material, I don't know if this Sony one does I think these old TDK types and stuff do if you, you can just make it out in there, there's a sheet of plastic in there which is like a kind of I guess a bearing or something to give it a bit of slippage so that this sprocket piece inside isn't scraping onto the outer plastic case, there's actually a bit of plastic, slippery plastic in between because eventually if they get a little bit of grit in there or just, just general wear, I think they start wearing into the plastic, you will get friction in the tapes or if the tape's been in a car and melted or something it might bend the case enough so when, when this mechanism, especially when it's got a big roll of tape on the other end and you've got to the end of the tape, we hit hit rewind that's when you're going to have the, the maximum sort of um, load on it. it has a lot of tape to pull through and that's when you'll find if there's a problem with this clutch that'll actually start slipping and you fast forward or rewind or run slow you could actually check this again like what I did before you, you can see the you probably really want to put a little mark a little bit of white marker or something silver pen or something on this clutch on the outer part and even more right across the whole thing wouldn't hurt I guess and then you can watch for slippage between the two parts is one part going at a different speed to the other um, you know it could just be a bad tape and in a bad tape this is again probably designed to slip a bit if it rather than put too much uh, load on the actual motor or belts or anything reels and stuff uh, but with a good tape it shouldn't really be any slippage there I wouldn't think they should have enough tension even when it's right at the end of the tape to, to pull that through nicely uh, without any slippage so if you suspect if you've got like a slow rewind fast forward usually what I've found is it's you need to pull these reels off and lubricate the pin they sit on that usually seems to be the main problem or you'll get a slipping old rubber idler wheel uh, one of these older sort of mechanisms even this one actually doesn't have a is new enough it's only got a play rubber idler wheel it's got mechanical or plastic gears for the, the rest of it but in the really old decks you'll find that's all rubber and that'll slip usually first or the belts will be slipping and cause slow rewind fast forward also like I say always pays to lubricate the two reels because you should be able to this one doesn't actually spin that well. A lot of these you could sort of spin them by hand. It depends what gears are attached and stuff, but they should spin very freely with a minimum amount of torque, like or resistance, I guess, to you turning it. I usually go for them first, but then if you're still having problems, it might be worth checking that clutch, um, especially if anyone's been in there with any sort of lubricant or if oil's got all over everything. Sometimes I don't know where it comes from. In some of these old decks, the grease tends to move around and get on things. Um, so yeah, it'd be worth checking if there's any grease or oily stuff on the clutch. Just put a mark across the two pieces and see if there's one turning faster than the other. Which means obviously that part of it's stalling and running slower and, and slipping. So um, it's possible. They used to sell this sort of felt material for VCR um, uh, back tension bands and the like. The little felt pads, brake pads and stuff. So you might be able to still buy that stuff if one of these ever wore out. You'd have to pull the clutch to pieces. And it should be stuck to one of the pieces. So it used to be like a, a sticky sided felt pad and you just cut it to size. It'd be a little bit of a pain trying to cut it to a circle because that's usually just a, like a donut sort of 
thing but um, with a bit of pair of scissors or something it shouldn't be that hard to make something crude enough to do the job if you ever find one worn out but again I don't think I've ever seen a problem with these it have to be really really worn to not have enough um, torque to just yeah as the pinch roller pushes in like a bit of a looper tape as this one's loose at the moment you can see that it's looped right up even the weakest little take up reel will be enough to just you know slowly catch up with it again and, and wind that tape in like it takes very little pressure when the pinch roller was doing it for you but um, it's pretty unlikely you'll find that but it's a possibility or the other possible only other thing that can really go wrong is that the two of them stick together which would be very unlikely but again with machines that people fiddle with or with age it's possible something's happened to, or some sort of goo or something's got in there some old grease has got in there and dried and gone super sticky or whatever and it might have actually glued the thing together so that's certainly a possibility but at least that solves the problem of basically what's going on with this and that we need to need to slow this reel down as it gets bigger or it'll be trying to just if it does one revolution at the same rate as this one as what it starts out at uh, it'll be trying to pull on you know two and a half times as much tape as the pinch roll is providing it with so it's going to be really pulling hard uh, if that was just a direct drive it's going to be you know could almost melt a pin or something through one of these old decks I guess and see what it actually does it'll probably load the motor down so much that it'll slow down or something before it'll actually break one of these tapes they are, are quite strong these cassettes especially the leader tape part I don't know the other bit might it is super thin it might break reasonably easy it's been a long time since I've actually snapped a bit of tape but I think yeah even when you they're wrapped around the pin rollers and stuff it's it takes a bit of force to actually break a piece off Anyway, so that solves that problem. That's just one part of the mechanism I didn't really think about. I just assumed that clutch was purely to, for the slippage at the end before the auto stop kicked in, but it turns out that is a, a speed adjustment, so it's quite a crude design uh, to use a clutch to do that. But, um, you know, cassette players are a pretty simple mechanism, so it makes sense to just make that slip a bit. Not sure if they had something similar in the reel-to-reel -reel tape recorders, but it may well follow on from the design of those because again they've got a couple of large reels or spools that change diameter and a pinch roller that, that um, runs at a constant rate so I would assume they must have some sort of similar system obviously they're not going to go to the trouble you've got a fixed speed motor um, you want as many just direct drive gears as possible so they're not going to go to any fancy thing to try and change the gear ratio as it went or change the motor speed or any crazy stuff like that the drive speed so it's just much easier just to have a, a slipping clutch there um, quite a crude old mechanical sort of way of doing it but crude and simple and obviously these things have worked fine for a long time and like I said I don't think I've ever seen a problem with one of those clutches in theory that felt pad should wear out eventually but um, yeah I don't think people use them that much a lot of the time there must have been some people that really used them but um, they never got that much use um, a lot of them, people just bought the ghetto blasters on and listened to the radio most of the time and that's all they ever got used for so a lot of these tape decks have barely been used at all um, but it's something to, to look, look out for I guess and just as far as the, the theory of operation at least that covers the last little bit um, as to how they sort out that tape speed difference um, so yeah it was good that someone asked about that because I hadn't really thought about it that much and um, yeah the, this one's a uh, Slightly different design, the old, this is a mech out of an old silver boom box. Slightly, this has got a rubber idler which is worn out in this one, that's pretty slippy in this one. But a slightly bigger, again, diameter take up reel, at least in the play mode, uh, compared to the, the spool and the tape. But very similar design, this one's got the outer, it's more like the one on the rear of this other one, the fast forward rewind one of this has got a, an inner part and an outer part. So I can hold this bit still while still turning the the sprocket part. So that's just sort of slipping. I'm not sure. It's, again, it'd be a sandwich type design, but I think it's between. I'm not sure if it's this outer piece and the front bit, or no, maybe not. It must be further in there somewhere. You have to actually pull it out and have a look. At least this one can come off without much trouble just take now I did it with my hand took the little plastic thing off oh, here we go oh yeah there's a clutch this front plates 
Oh, that's actually the separate, yeah, because that's what the idler presses on. That's actually got a little sort of tooth surface for the rubber idler to grip on. So that's the direct driven bit. And I can turn that freely without while holding the sprocket still. So the sprocket's connected to this gear at the back here. I can't adjust them. And in between them, there's another little felt pad in there, a little ring of felt, that whitish colour bit. So that's basically doing the same job. This just has a rubber idler instead of a. A, um, it's actually got, oh yeah, oh yeah, there's a, no, there's a spring in there. I was going to say there's a spring underneath this one. I'm not sure that size. Probably just to push the reel up to the little clip that holds it on. But this does have, this plastic bit is sprung. So there's a, somewhere between the two pieces here. They obviously put this sprocket on with a spring sandwiched onto the other piece. And then I assume this, this gear here is probably shoved up the middle and glued in or something. Yeah, this, so the, I think the clutch is attached to this piece. They've glued the felt pad on. And then there's yeah, a spring spring jammed in between the two pieces somewhere to force this back and then the, and the felt pad onto the other gear. And yeah, this piece must must have been made originally as a separate piece and shoved up there and either jammed in or glued on so you could probably break them apart. That's another bit I guess could fail in these. If they're actually a two-piece design. Because I can't see how yeah, there's no other really way they could have got that together. So that's a possibility that the, the sprocket could slip on this gear. That could actually break apart. And yeah, you'd, then you wouldn't get any drive to the, the take-up reel. Because that's, yeah, that's where the fast-forward goes directly onto that. So if it's got no fast-forward and no play, then that would actually be this part slipping against the sprocket part. But again, I can't remember if I've ever seen that. I, wouldn't be surprised if I have at some stage because I did get a few tape decks to fix in the old days but they sort of died off after the sort of mid 90s you didn't see many of them anymore most of them had gone to these later later mechanisms um, which yeah occasionally people would break them but because they're all didn't have the idlers and stuff in them they're actually quite a bit more reliable Mate, one of the main problems with these yeah, play idlers and, and when they had them in the rewind fast forward positions wearing out so once they once they went in the old rubber ones once they went from a rubber wheel to a, a tooth gear much less problems so sometimes these gears split and and slip and that sort of thing but yeah certainly much much more reliable mechanism and like i said a lot of these in the shelf systems and stuff, people were listening to CD or phono or radio and, and these didn't get an awful lot of use anyway. So a lot of these decks are in quite good condition given their age. But anyway, that covers pretty much all of that, I think. Um, yeah, I don't think there's any more. I did make a few notes. But yeah, basically it's just that changing circumference. And that's about it. Thanks for watching.